Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Misha Charles. This edition's top stories. The island's Prime Minister and Minister for Infrastructure meet cruise industry officials. The role of research and innovation in St. Lucia's competitiveness and productivity is being examined. Efforts are continuing towards enhancing the local government system. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. The expansion and upgrading of St. Lucia's seaports continues to be a priority item for the government of St. Lucia. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney and Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, Honorable Stevenson King, has traveled to the UK and Switzerland to continue discussions with cruise industry leaders to ensure St. Lucia's success with the optimization of passenger and cargo terminal operations. The Prime Minister and Infrastructure Minister will meet with global ports as well as MSC Cruises to advance discussions on the sustainable development of St. Lucia's cruise and cargo ports. The Government of St. Lucia is embarking on major infrastructural projects to improve its ports of entry, including the redevelopment of the Huronara International Airport and upgrades to the Castries Port. In the Prime Minister's absence, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, National Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph serves as Acting Prime Minister. St. Lucia is projected to realize economic growth of 3% this year. The projection has been made by the Caribbean Development Bank in its Country Economic Review 2018 for St. Lucia. The implementation of both private and public sector projects is essential to realization of the economic growth. So too is the level of productivity in the workforce. Against this backdrop, focus is being placed on the role of research and innovation to boost St. Lucia's competitiveness and productivity. Here's Glenn Simon. The World Economic Forum has put a call out for a new crop of innovators. It believes that a shared, connected future built by scalable, innovative solutions could be the answer to some of the most pressing global issues. The theme, Innovation for Greater Productivity, has been adopted by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC, which is tasked with identifying key issues related to competitiveness and productivity in St. Lucia. The NCPC has commenced work to develop the National Competitiveness Agenda for St. Lucia, which will establish the necessary framework to improve the island's overall competitiveness. To contribute to this process, conversations were held with a number of stakeholders and policymakers. Managing Director of Caribbean Awnings Limited, Paula Cauldron, whose company produces innovative products for domestic and commercial clients, stated that for St. Lucia to become more competitive, the work ethic must improve. Productivity means performing a day's work and making sure that you have achieved something at the end of the day, which means that you do not slack off when you want to, you do not take time off when you feel like it, that you put in your eight hours and that at the end of the day you, you have achieved something and that gives you personal satisfaction. Danel Florius, CEO of Ecolabs Inc., a green energy service company, shared his views on the importance of innovation. Innovation is critical to everything that we do. Innovation in the 21st century is everything. And I always say this as well, climate change is one of the biggest problems of our generation. And we need a bunch of innovative technological solutions to solve this problem. Kurt Harris, project manager for the Solarization Project with the Vaughan Allen Lewis Institute for Research and Innovation, Valeri, pointed out that for innovation to be truly meaningful, it must be preceded by the necessary research to answer the question, why innovate? If you have an evidence-based society and you can show persons why is it that you're doing it and why it is more efficient, then automatically you're going to start being a lot more productive. Because as you do things more efficiently, productivity increases. When persons know why they are doing something, they are more likely to do it. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, who recently launched the Decade of Research and Innovation for St. Lucia, believes the innovation dialogue must not be high-handed, but should also include persons within the communities. That conversation needs to become one and the same, that it is not sectorally defined, that 
the interconnection is evident and obvious. So when we talk about increasing yield per acre, it is not the domain of a field officer or an agricultural economist. That it is the business of the farmer, the farm laborer, the consumer, because ultimately, if you can raise productivity levels, one would think that the benefit can accrue to the consumer as well at the tail end of the transaction. In keeping with the theme for St. Lucia's 40th anniversary of independence, All In, the NCPC has challenged all sectors of the economy to raise the level of competitiveness and productivity on Ireland through greater innovation within their business processes. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Unit, Glenn Simon reporting. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is investigating a few deaths in adult males which have occurred during the month of March 2019. In some cases, the individuals had underlying medical conditions, but in two cases, the males had no history of any past medical illness. Though a respiratory cause is suspected, the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Merlene Fredericks James, says vector borne diseases and other infectious diseases cannot be ruled out as yet as laboratory and other tests are still being processed. The public is being asked to be on the alert. We should be reminded that we are currently experiencing a higher than normal um, number of flu cases as compared to other years, um, as compared to other years when we look at the, the particular point in time. The flu shot is available. Persons would know that there is a vaccine which can provide some protection against flu. It may not be 100%, but it would definitely reduce the likelihood that persons would develop more serious illness if they got infected with flu. So the flu vaccine is available free of charge at all wellness centers. We also have Tamiflu, which is one of the medications specifically geared towards um, treating um, cases of flu. Tamiflu is also available at all the public health facilities. The chief medical officer says while the symptoms appear to be respiratory, there are other illnesses which can mimic the flu. We know that dengue, which is transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, can um, go on to have a, some persons go on to have a serious case of dengue, um, dengue hemorrhagic fever, where they can actually be bleeding. And even in leptospirosis, the disease which we know is transmitted by rats. Um, with leptospirosis, sometimes persons can, it may not be often, but sometimes they can present with something almost like a flu-like illness, which may um, lead to deterioration. So again, we're asking persons to be on guard. We know that um, there are different diseases around, so persons should take the necessary precautions. Visit your health practitioner um, regularly and, and, and do it in a timely manner. And we're making the appeal especially to men because we know that sometimes men feel ill and they would stay home or self-treat uh, or wait until um, the situation is much worse. The Ministry of Health and Wellness will provide additional updates as soon as they become available. In other health matters, the St. Jude Hospital is working assiduously to ensure that the capacity of its staff members is enhanced through training exercises. More in this report from Fennel Neptune. The St. Jude Hospital, in collaboration with the National Enrichment and Learning Unit, NELU, is undertaking a training exercise aimed at developing the knowledge and skills of the hospital staff in the area of customer service and general maintenance. Chairman of the St. Jude Hospital Board, Wayne Harrow, welcomed the training and says there is definitely a need to enhance the capabilities of staff members. We see the need to provide opportunities for our staff both internally and externally. And what St. Jude Hospital we have done, we have teamed up with the National Enrichment Learning Unit of the Ministry of Education to provide courses in the area of customer services to most of our staff and also a course to and targeting persons in the maintenance department, especially with regards to retraining and retooling in electrical installation, carpentry and joinery, things that the hospital maintenance department require right now. Hara believes such an initiative is important as it is expected to bring about quality improvement in the service delivery at the hospital. The staff will be the main 
beneficiaries because their skills will be enhanced, their capacity in terms of what they know, what they will learn will, will be greatly enhanced by the programs. But more so the hospital and our patients, our visitors will see benefits, especially when it comes to customer service. We hope that the interaction between our staff and the public is greatly enhanced at the end of the program and especially when it comes to maintenance matters that we will see cost saving measures, especially when staff are retooled in the field of electrical, plumbing, carpentry, etc., so that they will be in a better position to discharge their responsibilities to St. Jude's in a more efficient way and also to our patients and our visitors. The St. Jude Hospital remains committed to continue providing training for its staff members. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. And this is the NTN Nightly. Coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. There are signs everywhere. Pay attention whether you're male or female. Visit your health center to get screened. It's a preliminary test to determine if you are exposed to the HIV virus, an STI, or tuberculosis. Some people who are HIV positive also have tuberculosis. But there's hope. Tuberculosis can be cured. And yes, you can live a full life with HIV. Talk to your doctor. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB, HIV. Encourage everyone to get tested. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello once again. I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. The government of St. Lucia paid special tribute to the island's most decorated athlete, Laverne Spencer, on Friday evening, hosting a gala dinner at Sanders Grand in her honor. Spencer was recognized for 20 years of outstanding representation in track and field on the regional and international circuits. The dinner was also part of the program for the island's 40th anniversary of independence celebrations. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, urged Spencer to continue inspiring other young upcoming athletes to reach their full potential and to emulate her achievements and discipline. You, Lovun, are a great example of a role model for all your young people, and even not too young, for everybody to emulate. Lovun, Donald, and Spencer, tonight, we welcome you in a very special way and say a very special thank you for 20 years of hard work, 20 years of zeal, sacrifice, perseverance, pride, courage, focus, lots and lots and lots of effort and self-discipline. We thank you for the exposure that you have given to St. Lucia. The second Paul Vol Clinic for 2019 will be held Tuesday at the Jump Center in Vidbute. This initiative is part of efforts to have Paul Vault as an event in inter-schools track and field competition. Andy Bell, is the coach paired in the training that sees students from a number of secondary schools around the island participating. In the middle of 2018, we start discussions uh, about how we can get the boys and girls uh, championships included as a part of the secondary school sports program. Um, so over the period of time since then, we've put together a plan uh, which includes a series of clinics uh, here early in the year in 2019. Uh, this will be the second of which that we've run. So we ran one uh, last month uh, before Independence Day in uh, at Viewfort. So we're moving this one up to the Jump Center at the Vidbute Secondary School. Uh, so from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock um, uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, April 2nd, uh, is when we'll be having schools come in uh, with their students and putting them through the second round of clinics. Uh, and then this will lead up to a third round that'll come in December uh, when we'd want to have the boys and girls uh, schools pole vault championships. Right now looking at December 12th um, to be confirmed, but that's what we're aiming for this year. Will it be St. Mary's College or will Miku Secondary lay their hands on a Mass United Insurance Secondary Schools Championship trophy on Friday when the finals of the competition is played at the Grosile playing field? The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports held a news conference Monday morning to outline plans for the staging of the final. Isabel Alexander Markey is School Sports Coordinator at the Ministry. 
the tournament thus far has been very well run. I think we have kept on, on schedule with, with our, um, how you say it, with our collaboration with um, our inter-school track and field meets. It, it, I must say it, it, was, it was a bit tedious, but then we were able to manage. I am, I am grateful and happy that we were able to complete the tournament. And we're looking forward to a very good finals on Friday. Mass United has sponsored this event for the past 33 years, the longest running sponsorship of any school sports event in St. Lucia. Hollis Bristol is a representative of the sponsors. The sponsor started with United Insurance and then they came and bought by Massey United. So therefore, you know, when you come a new thing, we had to resell it to them. And we've been able to get them to see what the benefits and to continue. We, at one time, were a little, not as hopeful, but we feel that they understand. And I think this year, we are sending to them all the press releases for them to see the commitment of the ministry in reporting on the matches all the time. And for that, Ryan, we at Massey and I want to thank you very much for the keeping up to date so we can send our principals the reports to show. A lot of people don't appreciate that when people spend that amount of money, they must be seen to get reward for it. So I thank you very much. And in that item on the finals of the Mass United Insurance Schools Cricket Competition, we come to the end of our update today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Efforts are continuing towards enhancing the local government system. Chevron Mario says details. As part of continuing efforts to strengthen the local government system in St. Lucia, the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment hosted a three-day retreat for local government leaders from March 25th to 27th, 2019 under the theme Collaborative Solutions, Supportive Structures. As anticipated, throughout the three days, participants engaged in intense discussion and group activities critically examining existing structures and processes and crafting out roadmaps for strategic advancement of an enhanced local government system in St. Lucia. According to the chairperson of the Mikud North Constituency Council, Ms. Brenda Paul, there is a lot to be done, but we do not have the authority to do it. So we are hoping that coming out of that with our strategic plans, we will probably get the support with the proper legislation to allow us to work more effectively. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Ms. Velda Joseph, emphasized the need for local government leaders to assist in providing scope and direction to help drive the success of the department. We believe that you must be armed with the knowledge and appropriate tools necessary for strategic formulation, for strategy formulation and implementation, and must be ready to apply these tools for improved council operations and for better alignment of the local government goals in support of national goals, but also in support of the sustainable development goals. Minister for Local Government Honorable Leonard Montout echoed similar sentiments. I recognize the role and significance of local government and how much more local government can do in enhancing the work of, of central government. This has not always worked very well in St. Lucia. As you would be aware, those of you who have been around in local government for some time, that we have spoken of local government reform for quite a while. We have spoken of revising local government legislation for quite a while, but not much has taken place. This retreat, I'm hoping, will be a catalyst to ensure that we move along with that agenda and that we can implement some of the plans and ideas that we have had in abeyance for quite a long time. In 2012, the government of St. Lucia established the Constituency Council Act, which set in motion a review of the procedures and functions of local government authorities. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevrolet Marius. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Quayob. The problem starts with finding a suitable spot. It extends to double parking. 
Offloading zones are ignored, thus inconveniencing commercial activity. Handicapped spots are occupied by drivers who use the quick errand excuse. And of course, there's the constant fear of parking tickets. In an effort to curb these and other parking-related issues, the Castries City Council will be implementing short-term paid parking. $3 an hour can save you $500 in parking tickets. Short-term paid parking, coming soon. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur, Madame, Department of the Responsibility for Information and the Government of the CGIS, the CBP Television National PIA NTN, and the Nouvelle Creole, President Primus Hutchinson. Minister de Santé, tu es concerné de yon de norme en PIA qui a très passé en cause de problèmes et puis l'exploration yo. Et malgré les officiers ni yon tisipsyon qui y paye ces situations sa la, quand même, yon paka tirezye yo a sou possibilité ki l'autre maladie ki ka passe pa yon pou l'autre paye wèz konsab. Sa se wèzo ki se officier ka aspire à ce rapport hors laboratoire concernant l'examination pour voir vraiment si c'est maladie ça la qui est cause c'est la mort. Chef officier médical Dr Mullen Frederick déclarait que maladie qu'on puisse à doux et puis l'autre dangereux maladie ça aggrave la situation aussi. So à présent nous j'ai fait test à ce que c'est cas ça là et nous qu'a espéré pour pour jouer une result là pour voir si si really c'est flou eh bien, si c'est dengue, si c'est leptospirosis, eh bien, l'autre am calte maladie. Mais nous aussi voulons que les gens qui, pour l'année ça là, nous déjà dit avant que nous avons plus de cas de flou, um, les nous um, peut-être garder le mois passé et comme ça. So, am l'année qui passe. So, nous déjà demandé les gens si on a pu calte sin, et que vous avez considéré tout ça par la double bout, le body a devenu plus faible, ou qu'il y a l'espoir plus souvent, il n'y a pas naturel, pour autres um, docteurs, et spécialement pour pour monsieur, parce que nous savons que le monsieur n'a pas aimé um, aller au docteur. Pas où il y a um, la caillou et le fait de la caillou, il y a trois mauvais avant ou, ou, ou chercher um, pour pour un docteur. Dr. Frederick a conseillé le public là pour visiter ce centre de santé en Lyon PIA pour recevoir une injection pour flou et pour uh, prendre des sous pour payer pour le traitement. Si vous avez malade avec flou et le docteur a besoin de tamis flou, c'est un remède pour flou, nous avons besoin de ça aussi et nous avons besoin de ça. Nous avons aussi um, fait un changement qui l'a mené pour um, bien laver parce que um, les choses sont flou. C'est le um, monde qui est malade tous et qui a pris la situation où ça a joué. Mais aussi, um, c'est James là qui, qui a dans le flou. Il a resté à ce qu'il y a un table, il y a un um, um, la porte. Um, right? Donc, so, on peut faire assez si pour laver la main um, souvent pour empêcher la um, COVID maladie. Dengue, nous savons, nous savons c'est migraine qui a simulé dengue. Migraine, nous avons créé des égyptiens et des mosquitos. Et leptospirosis, nous savons que leptospirosis, c'est ce qui là. Tous les deux, c'est maladie, ça, dengue et leptospirosis. De là, là, ils ont commencé, ou quand, on ne sait pas si c'est flu, si c'est dengue, si c'est leptospirosis. Parce qu'en général, c'est maladie, ça, ni c'est même ce qu'elle a il y a la fièvre. Il y a un um, mal, un um, body qui a fait mal, et de là, il y a comme si c'était même, il y a même maladie. Um, mais nous savons, dengue, ça, le monde a joué un dengue hémorragique fever, qui est un bail qui est bien sérieux. Um, Leptospirosis, nous savons, si pas traité, il y a un monde qui est mort. So, nous voulons un um, point de précaution avec toutes ces maladies, et nous nous nou continuer pour nous investiguer. Pour nous faire test là, et then nous avons dit exactement si c'est um, qui qualité de maladie qui a affecté um, nos apprises. Dr. Frederick a conseillé tout le monde 
pour veiller pour n'importe ces signes là particulièrement en parmi nom la fièvre mal tête toussé vomi relâchement pour porter yo à l'hôpital immédiatement Département d'éducation en collaboration puis organisation police cette ici tu as organisé une cérémonie officielle pour les officiers de sécurité à l'école PIA pour yo ça c'est monté ça veut dire ces officiers sont montés pour opérer un spécial constable pour protéger ces l'école PIA à peu près 25 officiers participé dans l'événement ça l'année passée et présentement trouver organisation avec autorisation pour ça faire arrêter ça veut dire pour arrêter. Alors, assistant secrétaire permanent au ministre de l'Éducation, Michel Charles, explique que l'initiative-là a porté très bon bénéfice pour ni ministère et ce constable-là aussi. Il y a vrai que si l'école pays a déjà souffert autant et un pile vol, ça veut dire, et à un officier de sécurité a déjà trouvé blessé sérieusement à ce travail. Alors, il était très nécessaire pour te protéger ces euh, eh ben pour tirer ces dégâts et tout ça là pour ces officiers capables de protéger quoi et propriété de l'école là Michel a ajouté que le ministère ni plan pour continuer ces entraînements là pour aider les venir plus capables pour conduire travailler au privé chef police ici Severin Mochéri encourager ces officiers pour prendre responsabilité au bien sérieux et pour toujours approcher travailler à façon de professionnel et pour toujours faire travailler sans prévoir sans faveur et sans malhonnêteté chef police la vérité qui yo pas ni pour supposer cachiller qui mon na pc ce yo fwe yo tat tat nen nen et ben bon ami yo il conseille yo pour renforcer loi et puis n'importe mon na cérémonie te pré cou jeudi le 28 à mois de mars 2019 ministère pour égalité justice sociale développement commun car informé public là qui grand bureau yo kay fermé depuis lundi le 1er avril pour juste vendredi le 5 avril pour travail pour faire travail pour nettoyer ces bureaux ça là ce service ça là qui très critique là en ministère kay trouvé en ces différents places ça là service pour assister les grands citoyens et l'autre qui ne brise service ça là yo kay ni pour visiter concept de ville castri service pour développement commun pour moun en wet castri kay pre cou en bureau régional en gozile ça qui au cas face là au cas faciliter ces services là services au bureau pour gouvernement local département recherche et programme Ketekas qui a trouvé un bureau SSDF à ce bon chemin John Compton département qui a adressé à faire accounts qui a trouvé un bureau trésor département qui est responsable pour communication qui a trouvé un département pour information gouvernement ça c'est GIS bureau secrétaire permanent qui a trouvé un bureau pour projet jeunesse ça c'est vis-à-vis du ministère pour le développement jeunesse expo ministère qui a fait public la savent qui il a rigoté pièce trois casse changement ça là l'occasionné monsieur madame ça c'est côté nous attend bout de nouvelle nous pour aujourd'hui mon cas monsieur autant pour garder mon cas bonne invitation pour jeune puis moi encore si des conserver la vie les mon cas pour cette autre nouvelle en créole et témoin vertu qui pas quitter mon faut manger presso à vie à présent nous ca vie pour nicha merci au pil primus and here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair skies occasionally becoming cloudy with a few widely scattered showers. The Atlantic High Pressure System will maintain a moderate to brisk easterly wind flow across the Eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. Low-level clouds drifting along this wind flow will bring a few widely scattered showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 1.40 p.m. and will be low again at 8.01 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay high at 2.47 p.m. and will be low again at 9.28 p.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.59 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.